Um, okay, I'm gonna start. Uh, so today is rumba, and I feel like we've done. Hold on, I feel like my sound is. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so it's rumba, and I feel like we've been doing rumba a lot. Um, but heck, we're just gonna continue. Um, I'm gonna do like uh, a review. No of all the Latin motion stuff because last week we Anna worked our way up into adding everything together. Um, so we'll kind of go through the stages of like here's some elementary stuff and then <laughs> that's what it was. They're like let's do four five weeks of rumba because Kate's good at it. Um, and uh, we'll work up and we're gonna work mostly on crossovers today because it's my favorite step. Um, <laughs> that's sarcasm, mostly because it's one of the first steps we learn and it's like easy, like step pat, like foot pattern wise, but actually completing it and making it look nice and doing it like correctly with partnership and all that, that stuff and not having bad feet sometimes gets lost in translation. So. Um, we're just going to start super easy with the box. Um, I think I'm going to do the leads part mostly today. It doesn't really matter if you're more comfortable doing the follows part and you know it right away, then by all means go that way. I'm going to take all the barrettes off my shirt. Um, so I look like an adult and then we will start. Um, the only question that I have is how we're going to do music. Cause I just have to yell at Gordon when I want him to play something. <laughs> so. Yay. Okay. So come with me. Um, we're going to do the box step like a million times and I'm going to kind of work our way up through what we've talked about so far this semester. Is this week five? Yeah, week five. So good. Okay. So um, being the leads part, I'm going to start with my left foot going forward. I'm going to face you guys first. So like mirror me if you're looking at um, but we're gonna start with our left foot going forward. As we're doing rumba, even though I don't feel like I should say it, or maybe you're gonna be like, yeah, I already know, but make sure that it's the balls of your feet hitting the ground first. So like, I'm always shuffling my feet on the ground, like my toes, the top of my, or the tip of my foot never really leaves the floor. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. So again, if I do the rumba, I'm gonna go forward with my left foot and I'm gonna do forward side together back side together forward side together back side together and shuffling my feet i haven't used this one yet this semester but imagine you have pieces of paper put pieces of paper under the balls of your feet and slide them around the floor and keep them underneath your feet if you lose it then you've lost pressure into the floor which you always want and now if I add some timing in, which is good, we go slow, quick, quick, slow, quick, quick, slow, quick, quick, slow, still shuffling our feet. When we hold the slow, we want to not move our feet for those whole two beats. Slow, quick, quick, hold our feet, quick, quick, hold our feet, quick, quick. And as we hold, we can use some leg extension. So if I this way. Oh, I straighten that whole leg. Oh, straighten that leg. <laughs> Push through that foot. I think I've talked about trying to make your toenails hurt. This one is where we do it. Oh, it's really good for your um, muscles, your posterior muscles as well. So I'm doing slow, quick, quick, slow. I'm sliding my pieces of paper around. All is good with the world. And then if I want to add some more action moving up, I haven't started doing arms or anything, but I'm going to go uh, with this leg. I'm going to do the weight for the bus where I let my right hip like sink, like I'm getting bored waiting for the bus or the light rail, whatever. I'm going to let my hip go and let that left knee come forward. So my hip and my knee are moving in opposite directions. If I go this way, whoop. And then I let my left foot slide forward. So I have this nice little separation between my knee and my hip. And then I do bend, straighten both legs, and then settle. I wait for the bus with my left hip. And then I do the same thing, bend, straighten both legs, 
settle, wait for the bus with my right hip, bend, straighten both legs, settle. That's where I wait for the bus with my left hip, bend, straighten both legs, settle, bend, straighten, 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 settle. I'm going to finish this box bend, straight, settle, bend, straighten, settle, and bend, straighten, settle. Now, let's get serious. So last week, last week, we were doing arms. And we were doing this, we did a whole bunch of drills. But we were doing one where if this knee goes forward, then we squeeze this elbow down. Oh my gosh, we're gonna do it all right now. So if I put my arms out to the side, let me make sure I'm doing this correctly. I'm gonna let my left knee go forward, bring my right elbow in, and this is where I do that crazy robot thing, but then I continue walking and my whole left side starts going forward. You gotta do the sound effects. And then I switch. So now my right knee is going forward. My left elbow's coming in. I do the robot on the other side straighten, settle, and then I bring this knee in, bend, straighten, settle, and I'm still doing my arms. I'm squeezing my opposite knee and elbow, bend, straighten, settle, bend, straighten, settle, bend. This arm's coming forward with my left leg, my right arm and my right leg, my left arm and my left leg, my right arm and right leg, Left arm, left leg, right arm, arm right leg. Oh, let's do one more whole box. It's getting real. It's getting real. Layers are coming off. All right, you ready? I'm gonna go this way because sometimes it's easier to go the same direction. I don't know, we'll see. So my left uh, arm is going forward first. Whoosh, do the robot. Slow, quick. Quick, slow, quick, quick, slow, quick. Hello, wall. Quick, slow, quick, quick. So last week I was talking about how when you first start, it just kind of feels like you're wheeling your arms around. That's cool. So <laughs> that's what it feels like. But we can always practice that drill that we did last year, last year, last week. We have these video, we have these on video, right? Like, is there a catalog somewhere? You could go back and watch, like, yeah! Go back and watch last week's and do all those drills like a million times. Um, now, we're going to apply it to steps because last week we had really just done like walks in a circle. And not that those are easy, but let's apply it to a multi-directional step, like a box and crossover breaks. So we're gonna do the leads part. Just do your feet first. Don't try to add in a lat motion in the arms yet. So I'm gonna go this way. I don't know why, because I feel like it. Um, excuse me. I'm gonna do first half of the box without running into a wall. I'm gonna do forward, side, together, side. Now I'm gonna go into the first crossover break. I'm gonna rotate 90 degrees to my right and do forward, rock, and then turn back, side. Rotate 90 the other way. Do forward, rock, side. This is like my partner again. I'm gonna do one more rotation. Forward, rock, face back to my partner. Now I'm gonna do two back rocks. I'm just gonna pretend I have my partner. So. If I'm the lead, I do a back rock on my right foot, and then I do a back rock with my left foot, and then I go back to the box. Yes. So three, I don't know how that makes three, three forward rocks and two back rocks in a row. I'm going to do it facing you guys, and I'm going to flip around and do it with my back to you guys. So with me, we're going to go, we do forward side together side we turn forward rock side facing back to our partner forward rock side back to our partner forward rock side that's the end of crossover breaks then we do a back rock back rock 
face our partner and back rock one more time. And this brings us back to the box, forward, side, together, back. We'll finish the figure, side, together. Okay, one more time, just the feet. Oh, I love having partners in the room with us, so handy. Okay, so this one, you can just follow the same path as I'm going. I'm gonna do left foot going forward. We do forward, side, together, side, forward, rock, side, forward, rock, side, one more, forward, rock, side, back, rock, back, rock. That's an underarm turn for the follows in case you're doing the follows part and then back to the box. Quick, quick, slow, quick, quick. Finish that box, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna go in a little bit of a diatribe about crossover breaks because they're so awesome, right? Do you guys have any questions so far? No, we're good. No questions, moving on. Okay, when we do crossover breaks, we haven't talked a ton about transfer of weight. I feel like Lisa maybe has done that more, but uh, let me think, I'm gonna go this way so you can, I'm gonna go this way so you can see it more clearly. But as I do all my box steps, I'm doing this dorkily for a reason. Like I'm really picking up my feet, right? This is great. When I do crossover breaks, I have to do the same thing. Like I can't all of a sudden change how I'm doing my foot and weight transfer because that would be weird. Like we want consistency through all of our steps. So as I do my crossover breaks, I don't all of, those, all of a sudden go like Charleston style. And I'm not saying that any of you do this, but some of you do this. So come with me on a journey. We're going to do the first half of the box and the side step. And then I'm gonna hopefully make it easier or maybe harder for you to do your crossover breaks, but to do them correctly. So yay, come with me. I'm gonna go this way, make sure I'm still on screen. So first half of the box, we go forward, side, together, side. Now, that's all pretty straightforward. I'm over my right foot, have my left foot free. I'm gonna swivel on this foot. That means this whole foot has to turn in place. So it turns like 90 degrees, right? You're gonna do a forward rock. That means go forward onto your left foot. hey -oh. Go back onto your right foot. Now you have to swivel again, which is weird. Swivel to get back to your partner. Now we repeat, but go the opposite way. So I'm gonna swivel to the left. Take a step forward so my right foot can pick up off the ground. I don't know what foot that is, my left foot. And then I'm back on my left foot. I swivel back to my partner, whoop, back to the side. Swivel, step, step, swivel, step. And then I could do my back rocks, which seems exponentially easier at this point. And then back to my box. I'm gonna finish the step because I enjoy finishing steps. Whatcha? Yes, full transfer of weight. My people, full, all of it, all of it. Be able to pick up your other foot. Do it again. We're gonna go a little bit faster and I'm gonna give you some tricks for swiveling. So going from our first half of the box, we go forward, side, together, side, swivel. Forward, back, swivel. Side, swivel. Forward, back, swivel. Side, swivel, forward, back swivel side then we do our back rock kind of nothing happens there it's glorious another back rock and then back to the box Shoop. finish your box good practice for if you ever take tests to get licensed um yes okay now here's some tricks this is going this is my plan anyways this is going to segue nicely into next week when we talk about turns if we're doing swing next week, we're doing turns. It's gonna be awesome. All those right after Forest on Saturday. So hopefully I'm contradicting him because he's awesome. Anyways, so as you're standing up, everyone stand on your right foot, right foot, yes. And as you bring your left foot underneath you, go whoop. So now I'm in this like nice neutral position and then I can push through my right foot to do my rock step. Then I'm gonna push through my left foot. I still have to be on the ball of my foot. I'm gonna turn this way, ball of my foot to rotate. 
because you can't swivel on your heel. You shouldn't swivel on your heel. You'll fall down. Terrible idea, okay? So come back here. We're on a right foot. I'm gonna bring my left foot through. That's gonna help me turn. So I'm in this neutral position. Push, go forward, back, only to the ball of your foot. Bring that left foot through and that'll help you rotate. So use this free leg of yours <laughs> to help you rotate. I'm kind of throwing this, its weight. If I go to the left, I'm standing over my left foot. I'm gonna bring this right foot through, whoosh, into neutral so I can step straight forward, straight back. Bring this right foot through, whoosh, and that should help me do my swivel to get back to my partner. Again, we're gonna do it like 19 times. So standing over my right foot, bring my left foot through, keep it going through, do forward, back, bring this left foot through, let it carry you and turn you to, toward your partner. Again, I rotate by bringing my right foot through, rock step, back, bring my right foot through again, let it bring me back to my partner. Left foot comes through, rock, step, bring that left foot through, right foot swings me through and back. And when right foot comes through, left foot comes through and let that leg pull you back to your partner. Yes, yes. Little bit, yeah. I got like two, I love our action. Um, I feel like I had a question. Questions so far? You guys ask me questions. Nobody? I like this whole group, this whole group in the kitchen. Looks like oh. a good dance studio over there. Okay, question? So I was gonna go, ask, go, go. Um, I remember you were talking about how on the slow, we aren't moving like our feet, but I was wondering when we're on the slow, what's what sort of sh thing should we be focusing on? Such a good question. Um, so we cheat that depending on where we need to go next. So um, as I do the slow, as much as I try to do two beats, like not moving, I still need to <clears throat> get, you know, 90 degrees or more away from my partner. So I use the and at the end of the slow to do that. So if I'm counting here and I go one, two, and quick, quick, I try to do all my turns, all my turns on like the and of whatever beat it could be. So Again, if I start on my slow and I go one, two, and quick, quick, and one, two, and quick, quick, and one, two, and quick, quick. And depending on how good you are or how quick you are at turning, you can make the and closer to the next quick, quick, but you use that like end of whatever that beat that you're standing on to get into that turn. And that'll be the same for like all turns always, which we'll get into more next week, but still, good question. Okay, so I have two more things. So here's option one for doing crossovers. This is the way that I teach them first because option two is dangerous. Just so you stick around, I made it dangerous. So usually when I, teach crossover breaks. I, and I'm like being technical about it. I really, 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 really enjoy when people go, let's see, I think you'll see me best this way. If I go side and go rock and this foot is staying right in place and I just rock back onto it and I still haven't moved it off of its place on the floor and then turn back to the side. I'll show you option two in a second, but then I go this way forward, this foot, my back foot doesn't move. I go right back onto it to the side and I do quick, quick, slow, quick, quick, slow. Like my feet aren't moving unless they're swiveling. There's no like depth change on them. Yes, I really, really enjoy that version. I'm going to go into more detail about that because I want to. <laughs> so when I do my crossovers, I'm gonna go towards you guys first. I do slow and I do my rock, I go straight forward, like I'm doing a forward walk, and then I do a back rock, so my feet haven't moved, and then swivel, right? So forward walk, back rock, 
and then back on my merry way. And I make sure that I'm going straight back. I'm not trying to turn back to my partner yet because that makes feet generally do weird things. So again, I like doing slow, quick, quick. I haven't turned back to my partner yet. And now I do all the turning slow, quick, quick, slow. And if anything, my hip actually turns out a little bit more before I turn back to my partner. So I go forward, back, and I open out a little further. Slow, quick, slow, quick, quick, slow. Yes, kind of. It's tricky, but it looks cool. <laughs> so, you know, whatever. I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to do it backing you so you can follow along with me if you want to. I'm going to go to my left first and I'm just going to go right into the crossover. So I go slow forward. I open a little farther. Do slow. Sorry. Quick and and quick quick and slow and quick quick and slow and quick and slow cool there's version one if you practice that version it tends to look very clean no one's really gonna argue with you it feels pretty good um partnership wise too like it's very clear that you're doing a forward walk and then going back and then rotating because you'll actually have like a lot of rotation to do if you do that little like peel away from your partner because you're going straight forward turn it a little bit more and then you have to turn all the way back to your partner right Okay, here's version two. Here's the dangerous version. It's kind of easier, but you have to have really good um, proprioception. Okay, so here's version two. And this is, depending on what book you're reading for American style, this is how some of the books will tell you to do it. Anyways, you're still gonna do um, a sidestep, but you're gonna start rotating out a little bit away from your partner on that first low. And then you still do a forward walk, but then on your back step, you're gonna start turning back to your partner. So I've already done like an eighth of a turn back to my partner. And then and I just have to do another little baby eighth. There's not really any swiveling on the back step, which is totally cool. So if I go this way, I'm gonna do my swivel here, cause I have to, and then I do forward and I start rotating just an eighth back to my partner and then another little eighth. Yes, I gotta scooch up. So I do side, forward, rotate a little, back, side, forward, rotate a little, side, forward, rotate a little, side, forward, rotate a little, side. Forward, a little, side. A little, side. Like it's not that different, but kind of easier, but here's where the problem is. You guys, sometimes your foot turns in and then it looks ugly. So <laughs> when we do our rotation, I'm gonna show you bad way and then I'm gonna show you good way. I'm trying to think what the best angle to do this is. So as I do my forward rock, if I start ro rotating and I know I'm to rotate back to my partner, watch this foot back here watch it. It's going to get weird. I sometimes go like this. And look at this. I'm in like this weird position right now where like both of my feet are turned the same way, which is generally not good for rhythm. And then I'll step to the side. Okay. I'm going to do it on the other side. So I'll go forward and start rotating this back foot. I'm going to do it really badly on the next one. Side. I do forward, rotate, side, forward. This is fun for me. And like this will happen a lot. You'll get like funky, sickled feet, like where ankles are kind of turned out the wrong way. That is no good. So when you do this version that rotates a little bit back toward your partner, you have to make sure that this leg, your front leg, your standing leg is the leg that you're actually rotating through. So my hips are turning, my hips are, turning to my partner and not just my foot 
you don't want to just be like, I'm going to point my foot at my partner because then this weird, like ugly feet situation happens. If I rotate my hips toward my partner, then I'm stepping off my track a little bit. And I always call it dog legging, but I like hook my foot. It goes like this. And I can still keep my foot turned out a little bit. Does anybody take ballet? I never did. Well, because like in rhythm, we always want a little bit of turnout, right? And if our ankles go anywhere, they like squeeze together. Even if they're not like actually next to each other, you always want your ankles working in. Get a bit of a better ankle on this. You don't ever want them to go this way. First of all, you like roll an ankle that way. Second of all, it doesn't look nice. So again, if we do these crossover breaks where we do a little bit of rotation back towards our partner, we're gonna do forward rock, turn through your hips, keep your feet turned out, whoop, turning back a little bit towards our partner, sidestep, forward, turn through your hips, back to your partner, sidestep, forward rock, turn towards your, turn your hips towards your partner, sidestep. Again, we do forward, turn your hips and side, and on and on and on and on. Yes. So you have two versions. Both are totally legal. No one's really gonna complain about either one, even me, <laughs> which is kind of saying something. As long as you do your full weight transfer, and you pick one like don't do one on one side and the other one on the other side because that's just confusing and it feels really different to your partner which i know you can't well most of you can't feel right now but the first version where we swivel both going forward and back like feels very crispy like because you got a lot of rotation to do on both the forward rock and the back step in and when you do this like slightly rotating version it feels very fluid so version one is very staccato Version two has a little bit more legato and like fluid. So you can choose that too. Like maybe you have a style that you really want to portray in rumba, or maybe you should have a style that you really want to portray in rumba. So pick one, yes? I'm going to see if I can get a rumba here. Do you hear me? Maybe. It's a lot Hold quieter. On. Um, did you hear that? I'm down. Hold on. I'm bad at this. Oh my gosh. Yes? Can you hear me okay? We can hear you. get the music on for real. Okay. One second. Okay. So I'm going to do the lead part for version one. And we're going to do it like two or three times. And then we're going to do the lead part, I guess still, we'll just stick with the lead part for version two and do it two or three times. Um, see if you can do a difference between version one and version two. There's the first thing. Um, and then see if you like one better too. We'll take a poll at the end. It's going to be excellent. Okay, two seconds. Okay, I don't know if you can hear it, but we're going. Okay, I'm going to go this way. Here we go. And slow. Wait. Slow and quick, quick, slow and quick, quick, slow and quick, quick, slow. Underarm turns to the follow. Back up together. We'll finish our pattern. Good. <laughs> it comes up fast. Okay, let's do it again. Version one, lots of swivel. Here we go. And slow. to swivel to do on a little amount of time. Um, okay, let's do version two. So version two is where you rotate a little bit back to your partner on the second quick. 
It's less swivelly, more legato. Ready? I was a little bit curious no, about like dead. I was a little curious about like the story that we're telling in rhythm. And I just like I don't know. Are there other like examples of that you could give me? Yes. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna sit down for this. <laughs> okay, hold on one second. Okay. I have my PJ. <laughs> okay, sorry, story for rumba. But if you're like really into like what the character should be, like how should I practice? It's got like solo practice ideas. Oh gosh, am I gonna remember it? Yes, dance to your maximum by Max Winklehouse. He's insane. He's like the greatest coach in the world. I'm not underselling this guy. He's amazing. Anyways, dance to your maximum. And what his theory is, is to use like, like an adjective or like, an, it doesn't even have to be an adjective, like choose a word that you're like, this is what rumba is to me, you know, and do it for every dance. So um, a lot of times for cha-cha, people are like sassy cheeky, fast, like whatever it's going to be, you know, um, rumba, a lot of times people describe it as like the first date dance where you're like, oh, hello, you're being like kind of flirty, um, but it's not like overly sexy, like bolero can be, um, and like swing is like your fun dance, oh, we're having fun, like we're supposed to show energy. Bolero is like the sexy dance of all of the rhythm dances. And mambo, I always think mambo is like the party dance because once you get to mambo competitively, you just have to look like you're alive. So like, <laughs> that's your whole thing is like, just look alive. Um, so for Rumba, there's a couple different things. Like I always think, you know, you wanna be flirty, but that's relying a lot on what you think of your partner and bless you. Sometimes you're not always dancing with like the person you wanna be flirty with. So as I'm doing rumba, I'm just like, I just wanna make it feel good. I want it to be like fun, but like, sorry, I have a hair floating. Um, I want it to be fun and feel good. So it's kind of like my feel good dance. Um, rumba is the one that we often learn the most uh, Cuban motion on because it's like the slow one, which is totally not true. But um, it's the one that we practice the most because you know we're doing back steps or we're doing walking steps or whatever. So that's the one that I'm always like, oh, how much foot articulation can I get? And I don't really rely on my partner, bless him, you know, married to my partner, generally speaking. But I just, I want that one to feel good. So I'm like, you know, how's my hair today? I do that whole like, check out my hair. 
check out my belt. Yeah, like that's my story. That's my story for Rumba. Um, because, uh, and especially for you guys, like none of you are in professional partnerships <laughs> at this point. Um, and even if you have like a, like a solid dance partner, you're still going to socials all the time you would be going to socials all the time and you want it to like feel like rumba no matter who you're dancing with so that like pick a story that works for rumba in your head even if somebody gives you a story that they're like this is what you should be portraying you don't always have to listen to that you have to use the one that's going to work for you and make it feel good for you oh wow that was a diatribe yeah I love a good diatribe it's so good okay so should we talk arms or does anybody else have questions? That was an excellent question. Arms, 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 arms. Okay. Um, so we talked, you know, basic arms last time, but uh, let's see. Since I'm doing the leads part, it's a little bit different, but not that, not too different. So if I start just with my sidestep prior to my first crossover, like I'm the lead. So I have like the underhanded hold, right? So I'm gonna go slow. And as I bring my left arm through, I'm gonna do this scientifically because I love some good science in dancing. As I bring my left leg through, that's where I start to do the robot. So my partner is in this hand and here's my robot, like we've been practicing. And then as I extend, sorry, as I extend my left leg, my right elbow starts going out. Remember, we gotta do elbow first. We don't want any weed whackers. This is like, crossover breaks is like the infamous weed whacker step. So I'm stepping forward, bring my elbow back. And then as I complete my weight transfer, that's where I take this hand and I flip it over and have a nice like 45 degree angle with my arm. And then guess what, I reverse it. So as I step back, I go elbow first. As I start squeezing that elbow to my rib cage, my hand turns over. There's muscles that hopefully should be doing that. And then I can offer my hand to my partner, like super easy. Now I'm gonna go the other way. So this left hand is gonna start to come out, but robot style. So I go elbow first, whoop, whoop. And then as I do my weight transfer, this extends and shoots out backward. And then it comes back in the same way it went out as I step back. I squeeze that elbow down. It should turn over my hand. So it comes right back to my partner. So again, I'm gonna go left foot coming through, right elbow goes back, and then I go wrist. Wrist kind of breaks a little bit here. If somebody stopped and like took a picture here, they'd be like, you look dumb. It's fine, <laughs> we're not staying there. And then we flip that hand over and extend about 45 degrees, come and squeeze it back offer it to your partner. And then as I step through with my right leg, my left elbow goes up and I extend, extend, extend as I transfer my weight and then bring it back in by squeezing through my elbow and my rib cage and bring it back to offer it to my partner. No matter what like thing you're doing with your feet, the arms should still be the same. It should still go elbow, wrist, hand. And then same thing back in, elbow, wrist, kind of breaks coming back in, hand. Same thing goes out, elbow, wrist. This is broken, it looks dumb for a second. And then you flick it at the end, so it's fine. And then elbow, elbow comes in, wrist comes in, hand comes in to offer it to your partner. It's only a little bit different on the follow version. So give me two seconds, but come with me. Let's do like mirror image of me or something. I can't really tell. I can't watch and teach at the same time. So we do hands underneath. We do slow, elbow and knee, quick, quick, squeeze it back, slow, elbow and knee, quick, squeeze it slow, or quick, slow. <laughs> I don't know how to count. Quick, quick, slow, elbow first, quick, quick, slow. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh, it looks pretty good. <laughs> it looks good. It's totally from my teaching, not just because you've practiced it for years. Okay, if we do the follows version, for whatever reason, I'm gonna have to like flip sides. <laughs> it's not that different. 
except we have a little wrist flip in there because we start with like overhand hold, right? Because we're not on the bottom of the partnership, we're on the top. And I keep talking. <laughs> so we do our side step. Even as we step side, we want to keep this arm going. So knee and elbow again, but our hands are already there. And then we extend. But so our hand started out this way, not like this. So we just had to extend and do the robot and then bring it back. And now as we come back, we're still going to squeeze, right? But then we have to flip it over. It's like a very tiny switch, but make sure you grab onto your partner's hand. And then I go right hand is going to go up. I'm going to do the robot forearm squeeze down through my elbow as I come back to my partner make sure you flip your hand over grabbing their hand in the way that we work with partnerships so again this is palm down we do quick flip it over quick slow give them back their hand give them back your hand quick flip your hand over quick slow so what happens a lot when you see um Sometimes what the difference is between lead and follow arm styling is really just the wrists. So I think I talked about this last week, but um, somebody told me that it's Eastern Indian, so like Bollywood style to do these little hand flips. And that's what the follows get as they come back. They go just to get their hand back in partnership. So like follows get to do this a little bit more or the leads get a little bit more like karate choppy in a very graceful way. Yes, oh, it looks so good. But the main point, the main point, because I'm about to watch a whole bunch of Ballroom Blast videos, like so many Ballroom Blast videos, you guys. You really came through on those entries. <laughs> um, make sure you do elbow first when you're doing your arm styling. I'm sure Lisa has talked to you about like arcs and stuff, but like, you don't want to just be throwing this around. You'll hurt your friends and it doesn't look pretty, right? Right. Um, <laughs> although it's kind of fun. Give yourself a lot of room, oh my Lord. Um, I had a question. Did I have a question? Yeah, more karate chops. I mean, I always say more aggression in ballroom, but not on your arm styling. Okay, give me a question. Cause I forgot what I was going to say. Do do leads flip their hands as well? Like, because you you mentioned that like when we go out, we have to lead back in with our elbow. Yes. And I can't do that without flipping my hand. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Um. I. Yes. You need to flip over your hand just because of how like physiology works, right? Like you can't squeeze certain muscles and not have your upper arm rotate. So yes, you do flip your hands. What happens with follows is they get to do more like wrist bends. So they have like more of this action at the beginning. I think I said this last time too, as you get in higher levels, it kind of doesn't matter. Like all the guys are doing this sort of thing. and It's all fine. So if you're like, oh, I'm really flippy with my wrists. Like it's fine. As long as you put tone into it, nobody cares. Nobody cares. And if you match your partner more because you're doing it, shoot, go, go do it, go do it. Embrace it. It'll be amazing. Um, but the most, <laughs> I keep saying the most important thing. I swear there's only one. Um, the most important thing is to have like tone and hopefully like your arm styling and like down to your fingertips should come from something you're doing. This sounds weird, but with your legs, like whatever you're doing with your feet and your knees and your hips should like reflect through your back somehow. And then whatever you're doing through your back comes out through your elbow, wrist and hands. That's like a lot of connection, vestibular action going on, <laughs> but it looks really um, cohesive when you see people doing that. When you're like watching somebody and you're like, damn, that person's real good. It's usually because all of their little pieces are connected and like, it's like the foot bones connected to the hand bone, which sounds like it doesn't work, but it does, I swear to God. Um, 
I thought I had something else about crossovers, but it's gone. Um, oh, no, I do. So if you're doing, like we we're practicing rumba crossovers today because rumba, um, but if you're doing them in cha-cha or bolero to a certain degree um, and mambo, they should all be the same. Like you want to pick that very swivelly version, like version one, or you want to do the rotate back to your partner in version two and maybe you do different ones in different dances but like pick one version for the dance that you're like I'm doing version one in rumba and I'm doing version two in mambo because good god mambo right you gotta keep moving um but like pick one and do that one consistently and like have it consciously in your brain that you're doing very much swiveled or very much rotating towards your partner Oh, wow, I have talked a lot. Um, do you guys have any more questions? Aim, 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 aim. Yeah, um, I was thinking about type one and type two, not diabetes, but the crossovers. Um, yeah. When, when you're doing type one, <laughs> uh, when you're doing type one, it, it, when, in order to do that, like, like that backward rock step, and yes. not turn towards my partner. Do you do like a full, a full figure eight with your hips? Full oh, figure and then, eight. Yes. And then swivel. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I gotta stand up. So when I do version one, whew, like I've done this hip is going forward on my forward step, duh. And then as I step backward, this one is gonna complete this whole thing it's going to go back and wait for the bus on this side and then right as I get to the end of waiting for the bus on my right side I bring that foot through and start with my new figure eight going forward on my left foot so if I do it this way I go right hip going around left hip going around and then bring my right foot through um so you want to get that whole rotation to your standing leg of that hip to help that foot come through. Because if you kind of short it, um, like if you stop and don't let this hip settle, then you kind of stuck. You're like, like, how does that foot get through? But if you let that hip settle, then that'll let this knee relax or release, I guess. And it can come through. It ends up again being pretty snappy, but you get full range of motion through all of that hip stuff where on um, version two, type two, as it were, I'm gonna do the full hip motion here. And I kind of cut it short here because I'm just gonna do a little sidestep. So, um, yeah. Yes is the answer to your question. Okay, <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Because okay, I've, been, I've been stuck doing version two, um, but then this is the first time I realized that I was sickling my foot every single time because it's so easy to start that swivel with my back foot as I, oh. as I step backward. And then, right? yeah, yeah. So and I think easy. it's from Mambo because I'm used to those like crossover breaks having to be so fast that I can't yeah. do the full like figure yes. in and everything. I um, understand completely. But I've always thought of them kind of like, um, like the like the back step of the basic, just like to the side. Um, is yeah. that a good analogy? Yes, yes, that would totally work. Um, yes, that is a good way to think of it. Um, the other thing, and it just depends on like how aware you are of your feet. Like just when I was doing crossovers and learning them in general, somebody was like, keep the inside edge ball of your foot on the ground and it wasn't meaning like keep it pressed into the ground and make your foot hurt but it was like that's the part of your uh foot that should hit first and if you're doing that like no matter where you're gonna place it you're still gonna have it turned out like if you're sickling it it means that you're either hitting like the actual tip of your toes first or you're actually going for the outside edge of your foot. So if you're aware enough of your feet to be like, okay, it just has to be the inside edge ball of my foot. Like no matter where you place it, it's gonna be turned out and look nice.
Good question. James is always full of questions. I love it. Just beware when you're watching my blast videos. <laughs> I'll be like, it was before those clouds. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> um, I feel like I brought up something, but maybe not. Um, next week. Yeah. Next week, I will have watched all of your videos. Seriously, there's 200. Um, and I'll probably have like some little side information about that. Did you guys all do blast? Raise your hand or superstar it. Yes. Okay, 50%, I like it. Shoot, that's pretty good. Um, so if I see anything that like kind of everybody is doing, I'll probably bring it up in class. Um, but in case you're like, what the hell is blast? Um, so ballroom blast is what usually happens in the fall, big event at, where is it, Kaufman? It's been at Kaufman a couple of times, I don't know. Um, and it's competition like, except there's a slew of motley judges who write really quickly and will give you comments on your uh, dancing. Like, you know, stand up tall, make sure you watch your timing, do your footwork on the third step correctly. Like it could be very specific, it could be very general, just depending on where you are, how much we know you, how much you, <laughs> we know you want us to be honest, like all of these things. Um, and, but it's usually a really fun event and somehow they put it on virtually. It's pretty slick that the, the way that I'm getting all the videos, like whoever put that together, 10 points to them. Um, and it's really cool because I get to watch the video and like type at the same time. And I wish I could type faster or like think of words faster, but like you should be getting pretty good feedback. If you're not just, you know, ask me about it later. Um, but on Saturday, I don't know if this is free for everybody. Ames will throw you a bone here, but on Saturday, the 31st, starting at 10 a.m. with yours truly, there's gonna be uh, Zoom seminars, like six Zoom seminars. They're, I'm not gonna say they're gonna be awesome, because, but at least five of them will be awesome. Forrest Vance, he's, you probably don't know who he is, but he's amazing. Um, he's like a really great, great coach. He's doing two, which is super cool. Jean and Elena Burstyn, our very good friends are doing one on at some point. And then Woody and Nelly, who are like standard extraordinaire dancers, are doing a couple as well. So international <laughs> superstar. Yes. Forrest is quite the character too. I bet he's super entertaining. So 6 a.m. to like four Zoom classes all day should be super cool. Um, and then there's somehow a costume contest. I feel like I'm taking your job. Lila and James, um, Ames. Uh, but yeah, it should be awesome. And then next week here, same time, same fat channel, um, we'll have swing and we're working on turns. And I know I still haven't done the contest where they're holding your arms up, but it was hard to do with this class. So maybe we'll do it next class when we're just doing turns the whole time anyways. One whole class, keep your arms up, so good. Okay, that's all. Do you have questions for me? Or should I peace out? I just wanted to emphasize that, yeah, the um, even if you didn't sign up to do the the dancing for feedback part of Blast, you can still come to the uh, seminars on Saturday. And this was this was actually pretty new information to me. Um, oh yeah. I yeah, because I had been advertising it as like, hey, like sign up for Blast so you can do these videos. It turns or so you can go to these seminars. It turns out you can yeah. go to the seminars anyway. Yeah.